G'day, it's Tony Burke, the Environment Minister. I've been lobbied pretty heavily from different sides of late on the Tarkine, and I wanted to bring you up to date on some of the issues around there and what I've been doing on the ground. The first thing I want to say is that there's no doubt that there are parts of this area that are truly magnificent and special. Uh, there are places that I've been to, where I've camped, where I've kayaked, where you look at it and you realise why people become so passionate about this special part of Australia. There's uh, issues with endangered species, a whole range of issues with this precious environment that need to be taken into account and of course do get taken into account in any decisions that I end up making. It's also true that this is an area where, much to my surprise, and what I hadn't appreciated until I went out and saw it for myself, it's not en masse entirely a pristine area. Uh, right in the middle of the whole area is the Savage River Mine, a level of development which blew me away to see it. I had no idea that a mine of that size was actually already functioning within the area and had been there for a long time. I also saw a number of sites where there's been mining activities over the years and in some examples the clean-up operation's been done well. In others, there's some spots where the clean-up operation just has not been done well at all. Uh, we call them legacy sites and there's places where things weren't capped properly after the mining took place and there's chemicals that to this day still flow into a river and just kill everything in that river for, for kilometres downstream. Now some of the proposals that will come to me deal with the expansion of areas that where mining is already occurring and in terms of finding an endangered species or a particularly pristine environment there's nothing to be seen in, in those specific sites. There's also some legacy sites where mining has occurred over the years and uh, the clean-up operation needs to be done but realistically with the damage that's there already it is millions of dollars in some of these cases to get the clean up done properly. And unless there's a further mining operation that factors that in into part of the work that it does, realistically the alternative will be for the chemicals and the minerals to just keep leaching into rivers and wrecking the environment. So some of these ones simply aren't as straightforward or as simple as I'd expected them to be before I'd visited. The final thing is that there are, there are some areas where there are applications coming forward in areas that are either quite pristine or areas where mining has occurred over the years and the area was well looked after and has bounced back and bounced back strongly. In many of these locations, and it, it surprised me, when you go through what you think is a, a bushwalking trail, you're actually walking along the old aqueduct that was put in place for mining operations or sometimes you'll look down at your feet and you'll see the railway lines there from previous industrial operations. It's a complex area. I'm going to have to make each decision based on the merits of it as it comes to me and there's a whole legal framework that I can't walk away from and that I've got to look at. But by going there myself, there's two things that I guess I wanted to be able to tell you about up front. First, there is no doubt about the natural beauty and the extraordinary nature of this part of Australia, this part of Tasmania. It's also the case that we are looking at an area where you've got connected temperate rainforest on a scale that we don't have elsewhere. But the diversity of the area, where mining operations have happened and the places bounce back, where there's legacy operations that desperately need to be cleaned up, or where there's large scale mining already happening, these are examples I wasn't aware of. It's happened, and I've been out there, as a result of campaigns that a whole lot of you have been involved with saying, go and see for yourself. I thought now that I've done that, before I get to making decisions in this room, it was important just to take a couple of minutes to tell you what I've seen.